there is this common phrase, marry the wrong person, you know, this idea that you can marry the wrong person. And I've seen it, you know, in like Reddit threads or, you know, support groups online that are people pouring out their hearts or just in personal friendships over the years where people are worried that A, they will marry the wrong person. So it kind of paralyzes them in decision making. Or once they're married, if they're hitting a rough patch, they're concerned, did I marry the wrong person? Do you buy that it's possible to marry the wrong person? I don't buy that there's such thing as you a right or wrong, right? That goes back to the um, Romeo o Romeo, right? Where our uh, <laughs> our vision, our pinnacle vision of romance in the 21st century is two teen- teenagers who snuck away to get married so they could sleep together and then died in a murder-suicide. That is our ultimate picture of romance in our culture it's insane it's madness um so no i don't buy into the there's one right person or there's a wrong person no doubt about it there are people that say i don't care what your values are this is what i'm doing we're gonna live in this house and i'm gonna drive this suburban i don't care if we can afford it or not and i will take out this much debt and i will buy this and our kids will be dressed like that i mean yeah there's definitely people who are not interested in building a marriage they are interested in um reflecting to the world their fantasy about what mm. success looks like um so yeah if you're married to somebody who has no interest in being married to you they're not right that's not right I don't know that they're wrong existentially. They have just chosen, I don't want to work on this with you. I don't want to be in relationship with you. Um, I think it's important to note that um, every single solitary relationship in the world, from a friendship to a relationship with a pet to a relationship with a, with a employer to a romantic relationship, every one of those is a risk that something's going to happen on the other end, that they're going to look at you and say, I don't want to be in this anymore with you. You can't work here anymore. I'm running away as my dog did one time. Every relationship you enter is a risk. And so if you're not ready to take that risk, then don't get involved. But don't don't peg it to some existential, I don't want to marry the wrong one. What's the right one? The right one is two people who sit at a table and say, I'm all in if you're all in. That's mm-hmm. the right one. And you can have a right one with a whole bunch of different people. You just got to, mo- everyone's got to make that choice. Yeah, it's the power of the promise. I, I think one of one piece of advice that was given to me years ago that I found so helpful is that morality, the, the moral code, like, you know, be faithful. Um, marriage is forever. Like when you get married and you make those vows, you keep your promise. You, you, that clarifies a whole lot of complications that sometimes we create or we can invent, where if what you're doing is not moral, then that thing is not going to ultimately bring happiness in the long run. And that thing is not the right decision, period. And then it's sort of the question of prudence. Okay, well, how do I navigate this difficult situation I may be in? But, you know, and, and, and if, you, if you are married to them, they are the right person. I mean, that, that's the, that's the beauty, beautiful thing about making the choice. You know, if you really went in that marriage freely and you really chose that freely, obviously, if you were coerced or abused or into it, that obviously that's different. But then that is the right person. And then it's a question of how do we, how do we make this work together? Yeah, I, I think you can tie yourself in knots. Is this the right? Is that the right? I think that's not the question. The question is, who are you going to be when you take this job? Who are you going to be when you enter into this relationship? Who are you going to be when you have this child? Um, and we try to hedge everything on the front end of it. I just don't think that's how it works. Similar to my uh, my grandparents were married, I want to say 73 years, maybe 74 before my granddad died. They were married for a oh. billion years. Awesome. My granddad was a World War II vet. They were amazing. They raised four awesome kids. They did all this cool stuff. And then when my granddad died, I remember my grandmother looking at me. She was a powerhouse of a woman. And she couldn't breathe right. And she said, I don't know what to do. And that's when I realized, oh, they're a single entity. She lost one of her lungs and she lost one of her legs and one of her arms and a half of her heart. And that's what a soulmate was. And when I when they got married, the idea of a soulmate that's what a dumb idea. That's that's dumb. Like we we just did life together for seventy years, and what we try to do now is we try to reverse engineer that. We try to hire. I mean, we try to hire. We try to marry a soulmate, find a soulmate, find the person, and then create it that way. That's not how it works. You have to go put in the hard work for 25, 50, 70 years, and then at the end you realize. 
Oh, we share everything. We share the air, right? And that's a different proposition. That's just a, it's a cultural flip-flop that we've done that doesn't make any sense and it doesn't bear out. 